You know, when I was in the Army, I was going through basic training. I remember when we first went on the range, and uh, it was BRM, or Basic Rifle Marksmanship. That's what they called it. And when we first went on the range during basic training for the first time, we all shot terribly. We all did pretty, pretty terribly, except for a few people. They have these targets that pop up on the range. It's 50 meters. There's, there's, there's 50 meters always back to like 400. There's, there's, a, there's a bunch of targets that actually pop up. And some pop up quicker than others, and they stay up for longer than others, provided that you don't hit them and you don't actually shoot at them and you hit them and they fall back. They will stay up for a, 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 a shorter time the closer that they are. So... You know, some targets will be on the left hand, the, the, they'll pop up on the left hand side, some of them pop, pop up on the right hand side. As you're shooting back, the elevation actually picks up. So you have to actually adjust your aim based on that. You have to also adjust your aim based on the fact that, that when bullets travel forward, they naturally drop over time. They don't just keep going forward. With that being said, it wasn't so much a test of speed, but a test of firing under duress. Having to adjust from left to right, elevation, breathing, everything else. When we all shot horribly and, we, and, we, and when we were done, we had three drill sergeants, and I remember that their names. It was Drill Sergeant Neubauer, Drill Sergeant Jimenez, and Drill Sergeant Johnson, female drill sergeant. They sat us down and they said, we all knew that you were gonna shoot pretty, pretty terribly because these are M16s, they, they didn't have the M4s yet, and, you, you, and most of you probably have not handled a rifle before. Now, we want you to look down at your feet, and we look down, we saw a bunch of brass, and brass is uh, basically, in case you know, if you don't, if you don't get anything about firearms, basically the 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 cartridge that the the uh, the 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 carrying case for the the actual cartridge for the um, for the bullet. So, just to kind of give into like into into layman's terms of people who who never, you know, who don't really get like bullets. And we saw all the brass. We said. And then the drill sergeant Johnson, female drill sergeant, and a great soldier, fantastic soldier, said, those are all the people who you just killed. You know, when you don't actually hit the target, those rounds still go somewhere, right? You just shot all those rounds into someone's home. She made sure to, to kind of, you know, calm people down who were getting, like, distressed over that. Because some of us got really, really upset. We were like, damn, we just, you know, this is like the, the very thought that we just killed a, a bunch of people, you know? I give you that story so that when I say what, what I say next, you understand the level of accountability that I come from. So I need for somebody to explain to me how is it, how is it that that's the level of accountability that we have on the battlefield. But we come on the streets of America where apparently you have training officers who don't understand the difference between a taser and a firearm. And now, I, I open carry this gun in every video because I wanna show people that I actually do carry guns. So I understand the difference between a firearm and a taser. In fact, while we're at it, let me show you what, what I carry for a taser now. Let me just grab it real quick. I'm gonna time lapse this video real quick. This is what I carry for a taser. This is, this is my freaking stump of time. Yeah, so this is what I carry for my freaking taser. So, uh, I mean, if that's what I carry uh, on a regular, it's kind of hard to, to kind of refute me and say that I'm not a, a bit of a subject matter expert given my military experience, my law enforcement experience, the fact that I carry a freaking stun baton. I mean, this is not even your common taser. It goes a little bit beyond it. Wouldn't you agree? So, I mean, let's, let's, just, let's just call a buck a buck now. I, I'm more than qualified to speak on this. And I got to say, this officer, Kim Potter, is actually a training officer for this police department and i have to wonder man if you are a training officer and you don't know the difference between a taser and a freaking firearm i i gotta ask the question why is it that i should trust anybody anybody on that police force to 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 know what they're doing i mean i've i've, I've worked law enforcement for several years i've been in the military for a decade i i, I think i i can speak on this i i don't understand how is it that people are trying to defend this or say, oh, this is a simple mistake. No, no, this goes beyond a simple, a simple mistake. Like, like for example, if you are an electrician and you badly wire a bunch of houses and people's houses burn down, that goes beyond a simple mistake now, all right? That goes beyond it. Or let's say, for example, you you are a nuclear technician and you cause, cause a, nuclear a nuclear meltdown. Yeah, you could say that, yeah, hey, man, it's a freaking mistake, but um, those people who uh, can't have children, and their, their hair is, you know, falling out. You can say it's just a freaking mistake, but the effects of what you did, I, I mean, you, you can't just shout that. I mean, <laughs> hey, I know, I know I, I took this dump truck and killed 10,000 children by running them over in freaking nursery. It's a mistake, bro. It's a mistake. Yeah, if, if, if you are the parent, you ain't gonna wanna hear that shit, right? And once again, we have a case of a young black man, 20-year-old black man named Dante Wright, 
who was killed unarmed, and people are, are looking into his background. Uh, he was running away from cops. He had a warrant and everything else. Well, if you look into the whole contents of that warrant, if you look into the whole contents of that warrant, it turns out that in Minneapolis, he had a handgun, and apparently that's actually illegal to have a handgun on you, so the cops started chasing him, and that's, that, that's why he ran. So, <laughs> Basically, that's what he that, that's what the warrants are actually for. So that's called gun control. And given how I open carry in every video, I, I I don't think that you think that I support damn gun control. So you know we you know where I'm gonna come come out of that. So I mean I, I don't understand how any so called libertarian, any, any red blood American, any I'm I'm, a, I'm an American. I'm an American. I support the Constitution. I don't see how you can support this shit. But, but you know, call me crazy. Call me crazy. I I just I'm noticing. Right. Whereas in some scenarios where some people might consume more raisin salad than others and more mayonnaise than others, people think that when they die, it's a tragedy. But uh, whenever somebody uh, <laughs> whose race might be might consume a little bit more basketball, a little more fried chicken. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've noticed what those people don't get the same sympathies. Now, I'm not saying I'm not suggesting anything about that. I, I, I am kind of getting suspicious. You know, I, I've. I've got some theories, you know. <laughs> I've I've been pondering for for quite a spell, and um, I notice how people bring up uh, Ruby Ridge and, and Waco and everything else. People and and people bring up stories about gun rights, but I, I've noticed the same people don't bring up anything about Philando Castile or, or Dante Wright. You know, I, I've I've noticed that people don't bring up the same thing. I, I just I find that odd. I I find that to be very very odd. You know, you know, or, or in a scenario where a black man has a gun on him and and, and the officer just shoots him by mistakenly saying that uh, that the black man said said you know the said basketball American was uh, reaching for the um, gun and uh, I I noticed that usually the the same you know people who have an issue with Black Lives Matter um, the same type of demographic they they typically always say what well, well, devil's advocate put yourself in the officer's shoes what well, me being a proud supporter of the second amendment I, I i can do that and i can say i still wouldn't just shoot them i mean people have a right to own guns so i mean you guys support the shit or you don't and in the case of, da of dante Wright, that's what got him killed a senseless law got this man killed and a senseless police officer and senseless bootlickers who who won't call out the figure police officers that's why these kind of things can happen Pe people ask the question how how is it possible? Oh my God! Some people ask, how is it possible during the Derek Chauvin trial that you could have something like this happen? Some some people have asked. I I, I gotta say, it's it's just like shoveling shit. Yeah, you can shovel the shit around, you can bury it, and put it into pots, put it in some water. But guess what? No matter what you do, it's still gonna be shit. It's still gonna go somewhere. Okay, that's what the, the status of American policing is: a bunch of roving shit, wandering, wandering Ronin warrior shit. All right, that's what it is. Anyways, guys, this whole Dante Wright shooting, that's that's just a goddamn tragedy, man. And to be honest with you, the anger that I'm seeing is fucking deserved, man. You can agree, not agree, don't really make me a difference at, at this point. This shit is that like, goddamn is awesome. Anyways, that's going to be the video. You guys be safe out there. Wear a mask. Don't get COVID, man. Horns up. Peace out. Good night and good luck.